So in this video, we're going to look at the MyStatLab and how to navigate the site. So unfortunately, Pearson doesn't give me a way to have a full student view, so you're actually seeing my view. Your view is going to be a little more condensed than this. So if you look on the left here, you'll notice that some of these sections have this little man with a line through him. Those are all hidden from your view. So in your view, you should see course home through gradebook. And so I'm going to talk about each of these sections. So the first one is the course home. That's going to be the first place that you'll go. And you're really not going to need too much from the course home. I'm not going to post announcements here. All the announcements are either going to be in class or they're going to be on Blackboard. Um, we're primarily just going to use my stat lab as a way for you to access your homework and as well as a way for you to access a digital copy of the textbook. So the next section down here is assignments. This is where you're going to find your online homework. Um, these are the questions that come from your textbook. And so when you click here, the different homework assignments are going to be listed as well as their due time. Now to access an assignment, what you'll do is you'll click on homework one and then you'll notice it brings up all of the questions. So this homework has 11 different questions. Now you can go in and you can work on these questions one at a time or you can do them all in one setting. So don't feel like, you know, the homework's 11 questions long, I have to do it all at once. It lets you go in and kind of pick and choose when you want to do um, different things. So for example, let's say I want to work on question two. What I can do is I can click on question two. It'll bring up the question in a separate window. So you read the question, go through, um, check your answer. There's also this option for question help. So it will help you solve it. You can look directly where the information is in the textbook. Um, StatCrunch I haven't used before, but I think it's kind of like an online calculator that if you need it, it's there to help. Um, it is going to give you this option to ask my instructor. I'd rather you not use this. I'd rather you just send me a direct email or come to my office hours. So you go through here and you answer it and then you'll click on final check and it's going to check the um, answer and tell you whether or not you got it right. So let's say after you work on this one you want to go to the next question. You can use these arrows down here to toggle back and forth between questions. Also, some of the questions are, um, have multiple sections, so let's look at one of those. So I'm just going to save here. So always make sure you save your work. It's going to close that out. Let's look at question 9. <clears throat> so question 9 has multiple parts. So if you'll notice down here at the bottom, it tells me I have three parts remaining. Let me know I'm not done with this question. You'll notice here I've already correctly answered part A and it brings me down to part B. And so I could go through here and check my answers. And then again, I would just click on check answers. So you just kind of toggle back and forth through the different questions. Again, you don't have to complete them all in one setting. Now, how you'll know that you're done with the homework is on this main screen. As you answer questions correctly, it's gonna put a green check next to them. Now question 9 here, you'll see it's got a green check and a red X. This is because only part of the question is correct, but there are still some parts that are incorrect. And then if you've answered a question incorrectly, it will show you a red X. Now notice here under attempts, it says that you have four per question. That will actually vary some. Um, if you have a multiple choice question, <clears throat> Pardon me, if you have a true-false question, for example, I think it's only going to give you one attempt. It's not going to let you keep on going until you just get the right answer. But remember, if you use all of your attempts, you can always come to my office hours. We'll sit, look at the questions together, and make sure that you get a good grade on the homework. Now, going back over here on the left, um, chapter context and e-text, those are the two different ways that you can access the digital copy of the textbook. So if we click on chapter contents, what this is going to do, well, first of all, notice the student solutions manual here. So you have solutions to all of the odd number problems for the textbook. So that's a good study tool. But let's click on, for example, chapter two. What it's going to do is it's going to break it down by sections. So let's say you're working 2.3 and you're kind of confused about what's going on in that chapter. You can click on the e-text, which is going to take you directly to the textbook or you can work on a study plan. And so that's something that you can set up for yourself to kind of help you study. So let's click on that and see what it looks like. So here, what it's gonna do is it'll show you different objectives from that chapter that you wanna study, or, and you can take a quiz and it'll quiz yourself um, on the different problems. You don't have to use this. This is here if you find it helpful, but it's, if it's not something you're interested in, don't feel like you have to use it. 
All right, if we go back to the main menu, um, the other way to access the textbook is through eText. What you'll want to do is click on where it says view eText and it's going to open it up in a new window. And it is a little slow, so do bear with it. So what you have here is a complete digital copy of the textbook. So if you look on the left, notice that it's broken down into the different um, sections of the textbook. And so for example, if we click on part one, notice that part one only has chapter one in it. And then we can further click on chapter one and it'll break it down into the sections. So if you only want to read one section, you can click on the particular one you want. Or let's say you wanted to go ahead and just read the whole chapter. You can actually click on the folder. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring up page one of chapter one. Now to turn the pages, notice that there is a bar here to the right and a bar here to the left. Those are how you actually flip the pages of the book. So this part of the navigational window, what that's going to do is that's going to take you to the different sections, but to flip the pages, you actually have to use these. So notice if we click here, it's going to turn the page of the book. You can also access the solutions manual from this um, part of the e-text. And so if you'll notice down here in appendices, we have appendix B, answers, selected answers, and the same thing. Um, in order to turn the page and look at the different selected answers, we're going to use this bar or this bar. All right, going back to my stat lab, the last section we haven't looked at yet is the grade book. The grade book is going to hold all of your old homeworks. This is really useful if you're studying for the exam and you want to go back and look at some old homework problems. You can click here and it'll let you review and look at those old homework problems. Now, your grades for your homeworks are going to be here, but this is going to be the only those, pardon me, those will be the only grades you see in this section. I'm actually going to keep all of your grades for the entire course on Blackboard. So you'll want to use Blackboard to actually calculate your grades and again to gain course announcements, things like that. We're really only using this MyStatLab for your homework as well as the e-text.